right, it's 7.14 and we will open the meeting of the Waterbury Select Board for Monday, November 5th. Um, the first item of business is to approve the agenda. So I'll entertain a motion on that. Can I, can we add somewhere on here just to discuss that housing task force, just a quick discussion on that? Yep, actually that would be a good thing to uh, plug in with the uh, consideration of the public hearing because I, I did uh, attend the planning commission meeting and I have some thoughts I'd like to share with you. So Great. that would be very timely. Uh, I'll make a movement, a movement, yeah, a move to approve the agenda with that small change. Okay. I'll second that. All right. All in favor of approving the agenda with the uh, added discussion point under the uh, municipal plan update, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Good. Uh, consent agenda items. Entertain a motion on that. I'll make a motion to approve the consent, consent agenda items. I'll second. Okay. <clears throat> All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, public. Looks like there are no members of the public here for comment, so we'll move on to uh, the item. Consider warning a public hearing on draft number three of the municipal plan update on December 3rd. Um, was that a discussion point for, for you, sir? Yes, I'm here to talk to you about the municipal plan again. So you held your first public hearing on the municipal plan, of course, and um, had uh, the Mark had some follow-up discussion with the Planning Commission. Uh, the two main items that came out of, uh, I think, out of your public hearing were the formation of um, an energy working group and a housing task force. So we can certainly talk about that uh, as well. But um, the the action that we're uh, requesting is that uh, you warn a public hearing on the subsequent uh, draft or third draft of the municipal plan update. Um, it, it's the Planning Commission's understanding and my understanding that um, the, you, the select board, did not request any uh, substantive changes to the draft plan. Uh, the discussion was more around follow-up uh, action, those two items of forming those um, working groups or task force uh, is in the municipal plan uh, as priorities. So uh, we certainly can follow up on that under the current draft. So I don't know if you want to first take action on uh, warning the public hearing, and then we could have some more discussion. Um, uh if if we can discuss uh, it first. It's well, good. no, um, I'm I'm in favor of uh, uh, approving the warning for public hearing unless there was um, any discussion pertinent to that. Uh, Steve's um, uh, encapsulated it pretty well. My my perception after the last meeting was that we really didn't have any substantive changes and we were more interested in some of the implementation aspects that. Uh, would be separate and apart. Um, so as far as scheduling the hearing on draft number three, um, that would keep us on track for the timetable uh, that's been laid out for us. Okay. All right, so um, um, do we need a motion? Yeah, I would suggest having a motion to, uh, to warrant a public hearing on draft three, of the municipal plan update for December 3rd, uh, if you'd like to do it similar to last time at seven o'clock and then start your regular business. I don't think it's gonna take uh, that long. Uh, we can we can work, Bill and I can work with Carla on the timing for the agenda, so. Okay. I'll make a motion to warn a public meeting to begin at 7 p.m. Uh, for the um, draft three of the municipal plan, planning, uh, plan update on December 3rd. I'll second. Okay. Any further discussion on that? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, so the, um, just a little feedback for the board members on uh, the meeting I attended. After our meeting, 
Um, uh, the Planning Commission meeting uh, was subsequent to that, and I thought it was appropriate to go and just hear their discussion and feedback items and also solicit some level of input from them uh, regarding the two items that we heard about in the public hearing. One was uh, the fact that the plan already uh, speaks to a housing task force um, uh, envisioned for implementation, research and implementation, I guess, is the best way to put it. Um, and then the uh, discussion around the, uh, uh, the energy uh, work group. And uh, when I spoke with the commission members, I uh, offered up that uh, traditionally the appointments from the select board, at least as far as I knew, uh, generally took place in the spring after uh, the uh, town meeting and normally we have the appointed positions identified, uh, advertised for, identified and, and uh, taken care of during usually that April meeting time frame. Um, it, with respect to the energy uh, work group, that that seemed to be um, am amenable to them, if and it would give us certainly time to uh, do some so solicitation on that. Their feeling was that with the housing task force, because they're um, they're about to venture forth on uh, new zoning um, regs, yep. and uh, they felt that perhaps having um, a uh, task force identified and and on board in order to be part and parcel of that discussion would make good sense. We had discussion over um, what made sense for composition for the board, and they felt that, um, um, that we kind of talked about a, a group of being in the three to five range for members. Um, they felt that having a member from the select board, potentially as a chair for that, um, made sense to them, uh, a member of their board. Um, there was one other membership that was noted right off. Steve, do you remember? Well, yeah, and maybe two. I think I would want to get someone from Downstreet yes. Housing and Community Development. Yes. Um, Bill and I met with Eileen Peltier. Oh, the other, the other one was an RW rep for the economic development aspect of it. Right. Um, so, uh, uh, out of a group of about five, there were three strong suggestions, and then uh, we'd have the opportunity for a couple of at-large. I sit on that board, so on the RW kinda, board. Yeah. Yeah. On the economic development board, so I could play both roles. Yeah, and I think it'd be good to have um, someone from the private sector that um, works in housing development. There, there are a couple of good people in this community who are very actively involved, um, you know, especially looking at um, whether it's multifamily or single family development. So that's something that you know, we can certainly talk and uh, maybe approach one or two people to see if they're interested. So, so I, I think that kind of cross-section would be ideal. I ran into a select board member from Stowe, and they are having very similar discussions. And I don't know if we would want to entertain the idea of merging the task force with the neighboring community that might be. So we're not just doing the same thing twice. I don't know if their challenges are totally different than ours. I think a lot of them are similar. I think they have some unique things based on the strength of their tourist market, but I think some of the challenges we're seeing is from that as well. So I don't know if we'd want to do that or if we just say this is what we're doing and just offer that. I mean, I guess our minutes are would be public anyways. I don't know. So I'm just I'm trying to take minutes and listen at the same time. So. Um, this housing task force and energy task force that you're speaking of first has to be created, right? Mm -hmm. We don't have either one yet. Exactly. Okay. We have and there was some expression by the planning commission that waiting until April, May to appoint and solicit members to an energy task force was okay, but 
because of the zoning bylaw upgrades that maybe a housing task force should happen more quickly? Is, did I get it? Exactly, okay. exactly. And the, uh, uh, the housing task force is, is a concept that's referenced in the existing plan which was the uh, formative part of the discussion. Apparently, it's, it's been in there for uh, the last few years, five years anyway. Since 2013. And um, it, it has just been something that um, n neither we nor the uh, trustees uh, ever, ever acted upon. Um, and now, with the timing of looking at the, uh, at the zoning reg updates, um, and the, uh, the issues that you raised at the previous meeting uh, certainly seem like a good time to look at addressing that. Is, did you guys discuss what the goals would be of this task force? Is it just to confirm and identify needs, or is it also to start to talk about the solutions, or is that what we would pass off these needs and concerns, and this, the planning commission would try to address those through the work that they do? Well, I think the group might want to set their own uh, agenda, but uh, certainly looking at how the municipality can uh, facilitate more, uh, more housing and more affordable housing, to me, is a good goal. There are already um, good goals and actions in the municipal plan related to housing, so that's the first thing that the, I think the group would want to, would want to look at. Um, there's also a process right now that uh, Act 250 is going through with the Act 250 Commission. So that's something we can look at as um, the, the state level. But I think going back to your point, Mark, I think it would make a lot of sense for us to form our own group. And then I could certainly see the value of meeting with whatever the group is that forms in Stowe. We have good working relationships with Stowe. Uh, we've been working on the Green Mountain Byway together and uh, other transportation projects, clearly. So um, that, I think, makes a lot of sense. But um, especially with the zoning regs, it makes sense to have our own right. group. And um, you know, some, some issues are in common. Some issues are uh, quite different. They have more issues with uh, the use of apartments for B&B uh, &B use. Uh, that's certainly starting or, or a factor in Waterbury, but not as large a factor. And then workforce housing for Stowe Mountain Resort and other um, the other resort-oriented businesses is, is a huge issue in Stowe. So I, yeah, I think there's a lot of value in collaboration, but I would uh, be in favor of us move the select board moving ahead um, with with the formation of our own group, and then we go. So maybe what we could do is put this on the agenda for a future meeting, and you could uh, we could go through it in more detail. I can talk to the planning commission about it, <coughs> see who would be interested. They meet uh, next Monday, mm -hmm. and we can put this on the agenda and um, see if a member of the planning commission is interested. I'm sure we can find someone who's uh, would would be interested, and then you could um, find out who on the. Um, Select board is interested in what the structure of the group, and I, I see the, a good model as our floodplain management working group uh, that was formed by the select board and has been very active and productive, so uh, we could look at a- How often are they meeting? Uh, they meet about every other month right now. The floodplain management? The floodplain management yeah. working group, yeah. yeah. So, so that's, you know, they are still tackling projects uh, it seems like you'd want to identify whatever roadblocks there are and then come up with some action items, but I'll leave it up to you. Yeah, de definitely. And I think that um, we can talk to Eileen Peltier with, uh, with the uh, Downstreet Housing Community Development. And um, as I mentioned, Bill and I met with her oh, probably four or five weeks ago uh, for just a brain little brainstorming session. And we can engage her again as well and see who they might be able to get involved and they can give us some good advice. Yeah, I think putting it on a future agenda yep. fairly soon would be a good idea. Yep. So why don't we do that? We'll um, uh, put that in as a future agenda item. And I, I know um, uh, Chris is going to be gone for a bit, but my sense was both he and that were are both very interested in this topic for discussion too. Okay.
Thank you. Good, good. Um, let Bill finish his note taking and then it, uh, it rolls over to manager's items. Yeah, okay. So, um, Oh, could I just make a request? I don't know if I could just interrupt. Is there any chance we could do the trails program first, and then I'd like to, and then I could, unless you need me here for the health insurance. Uh, no. Um, I don't know if that's appropriate. So we can do B first. Is fine. Would that be okay? Yeah. Okay, that would help me out a lot, and I can head out. Thank you, Bill. You want me to go ahead, Bill? Yeah. Okay, great. So um, this is an item which... Uh, has been discussed before. Uh, this is the... Um, Steve uh, put something at your desk. Yeah, so I put two things at your um, spots. Uh, one is a map um, that's just uh, titled Perry Hill Road Path Route, and um, it has a route that's marked in uh, a black dashed line. That uh, This is the path that you've discussed before that would connect um, Lincoln, the sidewalk on Lincoln Street um, that comes almost to the intersection with Perry Hill Road and the Waterbury Commons housing development, which uh, shows in the lower right corner of this map. And um, just a quick uh, recap, and then I'll, I'll um, tell you why we put this on the agenda, because there's, there's a grant opportunity, which is uh, with the Recreation Trails program, and I've attached the uh, pre-application form, or I've, I've handed out the pre-application uh, pre form as well. So this project grew out of the, uh, the permitting process for the Water, Waterbury Commons uh, planned unit development. It's a 26 lot planned unit development that's um, a little more than one half uh, built out right now. There are, I think, around 14 houses. Um, there will be one on lot 26 that's um, actually under construction now. So, the, um, as you may recall, the, um, there was a um, agreement, if you will, in the um, approval for that under the criteria dealing with pedestrian access that um, the, the developer, Paul Arnott, offered to construct a path uh, on the old Mount Mansfield Electric Railway fill, which parallels uh, Perry Hill Road and is just outside of the right-of-way on Perry Hill Road. Uh, Paul uh, offered to um, construct that path if uh, the, the municipality would provide, the town would, would supply materials. So we had a follow-up discussion with the select board. There was a lot of concern about maintenance and that this not be a sidewalk per se. And I think there was agreement among the uh, homeowners who were present in the select board that this would be more of a, a crushed stone path. It could be used seasonally. And the, um, the people from Waterbury Commons development um, expressed a willingness to um, maintain this path in the near future. And there was a, uh, in the motion, in the select board motion, to uh, have some further consideration of this path. It was agreed that the town would not have responsibility for maintenance over the next five years. That's my recollection. And, and um, so that, that was where we left it. So the opportunity is um, with the, the Vermont Recreation Trails program. It's a federally funded program. Uh, it's used extensively by the Green Mountain Club and by uh, lots of uh, municipalities, local trails organizations. We obtained a Recreation Trails program grant back uh, probably in the late 1990s to do some upgrades to the community path in the vicinity of the Country Club of Vermont. And those mm -hmm. improvements have, have lasted till today. So um, the, um, we've done some estimating, um, and materials are going to be in the um, $5,500 to $6,000 range. And um, there may be some other uh, consultant costs. We're looking into whether we'd have to do a phase two archaeological survey. Uh, the process here actually is that um, there's a deadline of November 15th for this pre-application, and it's really just a placeholder. 
the, the actual grant application is due on January 1st. And um, one of the aspects is that we need to have all the uh, easements in place for the project uh, prior to the deadline of, of January 1st. Um, I have exchanged messages with Paul Arnott. Um, he has uh, had some conversation with the neighbors. Um, there would need to be an easement. Um, this would be an easement to the town um, to facilitate applying for grant funds in part and constructing the trail uh, on lot 26. And then uh, it's a little hard to see, but there, uh, David and uh, Catherine Niddle, K-N-I-T-T-L-E, own the um, parcel 702. That's the next one to the uh, west. And then Brian Mack owns the um, parcel 703. Uh, Brian Mack uh, submitted a letter of uh, commitment with the grant up, with the um, permitting, but the Niddles have purchased this from the Kingsbury since the Waterbury Commons project was permitted. So, um, so Paul Arnott is willing to work on the easements. Uh, we would need to have our uh, attorney review them, uh, and you know, municipal attorney. And Paul uh, thinks that that could be done by January 1st. If for some reason it's not done, we don't apply. That's the bottom line. But um, so the, I just wanted to bring this. I talked to Bill about the project, um, and he was willing to have it put on your agenda. And um, we'd like to have, if you're inclined to um, have us put in the pre-application, we we'd want to get your authorization or uh, a motion. So what's changed from the last time this was presented? Um, what are the conditions of the grant? Would, is there a reimbursement grant? Uh, this is a, correct. It's all, with, it's all within, they would give an easement, so then the town would have an easement for the trail. So right. it's not, it's like a, it's not privately owned and it's a public right. easement. Yeah, the, the, as Steve just indicated, in order to get this money, and this is this is trails uh, money as opposed to bike and ped money, um, and if it were bike and ped money, my understanding is that there'd be a requirement that the town would have to provide uh, maintenance even in the winter time. This is a trail; it would be much more like the community path that comes down from the golf course. Um, the opportunity is that the folks in that um, that development really would like better pedestrian access to the village. Um, this can be done. There's a there's a matching requirement to the grant, but the materials that Steve just identified and a few other in kind services would probably be enough to do. The match. We don't view this as a very uh, expensive project, um, and right now the you know we have to put this letter of intent in by November, and then Steve and Bill Woodruff, and to a lesser degree myself, will get involved. And if we can get everything put together and have it ready to go for January 1st, we'll apply. And if we don't, we won't apply. But we can't apply unless we have this letter of intent and you don't meet again until after November 15th. So, so, so the grant would be for the materials and then the in-kind services would come from the towns? Well, no. Who's building, no, no. This? Who's building this? Is Paul building it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Paul Arnott would provide construction. Uh, there is a need for some rock stabilization right. um, down closer to um, Lincoln Street. Mm -hmm. So there's a fair amount of equipment and um, labor time that um, Paul has um, committed uh, to the project. I think it would be very adequate in kind okay. match. Right. And, the, and the grant would pay for materials, basically. So basically, the town would be, be no cost to the town. Well, we're going to have staff time. Other than and, staff time. Um, but we would have well, the staff, staff time and materials. Yeah. yeah. Is that a 20, 25 percent match? Well, no, it's 50 50 it's match. 50 50? Yeah. The way we've structured it, the, um, We've, we were estimating that the, um, the gravel and crushed stone would be delivered to the site. We would contract that so the town wouldn't have to truck it. Uh, that's the way Bill and I have discussed the project. So as I understand it, the grant would 
would pay for 100% of the materials. Um, the, the match for construction would be provided by the private developer. We're going to have some cost in reviewing the easements. Uh, we've got staff time. So, you know, there, there is a cost to the town. We're not telling you that there's no cost to right. the town. But, um, and we'll flesh this all out. Yeah. And yeah. We'll have time to report to you before this grant application goes in in the end of December. But we can't submit it if we don't do this by November 15th. Yeah. Yeah. And we have to do that tonight if we're going to do that. Yeah. No, and this satisfies the concerns that you'd expressed earlier about the ongoing maintenance. So far, it does, yeah, yeah. yes. And if we find out otherwise, I'll recommend not putting the application in. Okay. But. Yeah, well, one of the issues is that we want to make sure this path is built really well. So to me, that's the advantage of going with a, a grant program. We can make sure that it's good quality materials, that uh, any retaining um, elements are well constructed. We'll look at the engineering of that with Mark um, <coughs> and Bill Woodruff. So to me, that's the advantage of having grant funds. We can really make sure that it's done properly and that uh, maintenance um, in the future is uh, reasonable. I'm in support. I would make a motion to approve this free application that's due by November 15th okay, for the materials to be covered. As you've stated. Should we call it the Perry Hill Road Path for yeah. the moment? Sure. We may come up with a different name. Perry Hill for the, moment. For the Perry Hill Path. I'll second. All right. Any further discussion on this topic? No, I just want to say um, I appreciate that you have found a way to move forward because I, I was impressed by the number of residents who turned out that night and I felt badly that we couldn't really do anything. So I think this sounds like a good solution. We're trying. <laughs> okay, all in favor of uh, approving the authorization for submitting the pre-application form, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Nope. Good. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Appreciate Steve. <coughs> so, um, moving back to letter A. Thanks, Steve. Yep. Yeah, um, the employee health insurance, this is the time of year that we have to make a decision. Um, the open enrollment period through Vermont Health Connect, where we get our insurance, uh, has started uh, and it runs through the middle of December. Um, I'm a little bit, normally I would have had this to you at your last meeting, but um, I spent quite a bit of time trying to see if I could figure out a way that we could allow the employees to choose plans from MVP as well as Blue Cross. And ultimately, just like last year, I've come to the same conclusion that while MVP has um, a little bit better rates, uh, they, don't do, uh, they don't do all the administration of uh, what we offer employees. We offer both we, we offer a stipend to the employees, and a, an allowance, if you will, and then tell them you can take this money and buy whatever plan you want from Blue Cross Blue Shield. And some employees choose um, platinum plans, and they, they use our allowance, and then they add their own money to it. And other employees uh, buy very, well, I was going to say very inexpensive. They buy the lowest price plans that are still expensive, but they're the lowest price plans. And then they use part of their allowance to have the town fund either a health reimbursement account or even in a health savings account. And the difference is the health reimbursement account money remains the employer's money until the employee uses it. And if they don't use it, it stays with the employer. Um, an HSA, as soon as it goes into the employee's savings account, it's the employee's money and the employer doesn't get it back. But we have a number of employees who choose the HSAs, and when they do, when they do that, they're, they're taking on a fairly significant risk. Um, the out-of-pocket uh, for a single person for an HSA um, most of our employees take a bronze HSA. If they're a single person, they've got a, a maximum out-of-pocket exposure in any given year of uh, over $6,600. And if they're, 
if they've got a spouse or a child, that doubles. So they're on the hook for, you know, $13,000 or so in the worst case scenario. MVP does not offer administration for HSAs. So if we were going to offer MVP plans and employees wanted to take it and then they also wanted an HSA, we'd have to pay money for a third party administrator to run the Section 125 plan. Um, and it just doesn't make sense right now to do that. One consideration in the future would be just to tell employees if you take the MVP plan, uh, you know, you can do it, but you can't choose an HSA plan and just go with the HRAs. Um, but with only 20 or so employees having two different uh, health plans to administer, administer, it's a lot of work. So I ended up coming back to the place that I have been the last couple of years to offer um, employees who are eligible for health insurance, so anybody who works more than 30 hours a week is eligible, um, to choose any Blue Cross Blue Shield plan. And, uh, you know, I'm <clears throat> recommending a 2.85% increase in the uh, in the allowance that we offer employees that's um, just slightly above the rate of inflation inflation through the last um, uh, period through September um, was just slightly higher than that I mean just slightly lower than that somewhere in this memo um, so I don't think this will be a budget buster. It's not significantly higher than uh, that um, that uh, increase. I'll stop there if you have questions. CPI was 2.3% from September of 17 to September of 18. So, uh, you know, last year the CPI was in the 2% range and we offered a, I think it was a 4.5% increase in the allowance last year. So this year it's much closer to the uh, rate of inflation and it's I'm making that recommendation because the prices of the plans a year ago all increased by 11 percent. This year, it wasn't it wasn't that high. Mm -hmm. So, um, kind of gives equal weight to both inflation and the uh, cost increases. How long have we been using Blue Cross Blue Shield for the administrator? Um, when we when. Back in 2014 is when um, we, as an employer under 50 employees, mm -hmm. had to go through Health Connect. And when we did then, our intent at the time was to offer any plan available through Health Connect. Yeah. And our employees in those days, when Health Connect first started, if you remember, all the employees were supposed to be treated just like the individual market and they were supposed to go out and make their own selections yeah. through the portal yeah. and the portal didn't work. So at the 11th hour we were able to work a deal as a small group employer through the Vermont League of Cities and Towns and uh, actually have a group plan through the Health Connect through Blue Cross. So we've been with Blue Cross since 2014 when we went to this current system. We have used MVP in the past but it was when we were still with Vermont League of Cities mm -hmm. and Towns. Mm -hmm. Well, if we've got employees that are utilizing HSAs or HRAs, it seems as though Blue Cross Blue Shield is the option to, to pursue. Bill, in the section about paying out employees who choose not to take health care, yeah. does that include anyone who has health care outside of, like, through a spouse or anyone else? Yeah, we, we make our employees tell us that if they're eligible for health insurance, they can't just not take it. They have to have it somewhere else. So if, they're, if they have a spouse that has health insurance somewhere else and they feel that plan is better, they take it through the spouse. 
Um, and, and we presently are paying those people $70.19 <clears throat> a month not to take hours. Yeah. There are some employers who, you know, really try to, you know, push their employees to take their spouse's plan. And I, I never agreed about doing this <laughs> until very recently, and it's a modest uh, acknowledgement that we're giving to these people. If you, if you do what I recommend, we're going to pay them $100 a month, which is a taxable, you know, it's taxable mm -hmm. because it's, it's going to be paid to them as opposed yeah. to a, a non-taxable benefit that's worth, you know, $15,000. So um, some employers out there pay real money for people not to take their plan, you know, yeah. $4,000 yeah. or $5,000 a year not yeah. to take their plan. So so that, that chart is the average monthly, the 753 for 2019? Is that what that, that chart is? Where are you looking? Um, in that section. Page it says two. single plan, 2019, yeah. 753. That's the yeah. average monthly allowance. That is the allowance for, if, if you're a single, if you're an employee and single, yeah. The recommendation is you get paid 753. You get an allowance of 753 to buy your health plan. If you're a family, you get 1863 dollars as an allowance to buy your health insurance. I think the math might be wrong then, because it says a recommended increase amount 100 per month. The amount is only 7.53 percent. But isn't it 100 divided by 753? Right. No. The, the bottom, employees eligible for health insurance who choose to decline coverage. I would say this amount is only 7.53% of the average monthly allowance, but is it 100 divided by 753? It's like 13%. I say 53% of the average monthly allowance provided. 13.3. I'd have to do the math again. I see that you're recommending up to 100, but would it be cleaner if we just said 10% of the average monthly single? So it would be 75, 30. Then it would just tr always trend with instead of having to make the decision to bring each one up together every year. So if somebody has a family... A percentage instead of a fixed rate. And then as it adjusted from year to year, right. it would be that percentage. Right. I think what I was trying to say is if our average employee is in that two-person range, so 14, 1468, if I'm the average employee and I'm getting an allowance of 1468, 753 of 1468 is $110. So that's what I was trying to say that the hundred dollars a month is about 7.53 percent of what the employees who are getting fourteen hundred dollars a month okay yeah i think i thought maybe it was just accidental flipping of the numerator and denominator because uh, 753 it's divided by 100. no <clears throat> Do you, do you think that's the way to proceed is to continually talk about how each one increases or should we just peg? I guess the 753 is calculated. How do you calculate those? Which 753 uh, are you talking about? In that about? chart, I'm just trying to figure out if we can take away where we always decide that each one and if one can just peg or like be correlated to the other one through a percentage. Um, in that chart you gave in 2019, single payer plan seven, 753, parent child 1418. 
Because it looks like in 2018, we did 68.25, which is less than 10% of the single plan of 73, 732. So we are we worried about the are we I'm just wondering if we can the hundred dollars a month for the people I'm just wondering if we can clean that up and not because we're gonna this is gonna have come up every year, right? So if we had that as a percentage, we could just basically talk about this world and the and it would automatically tell us what the decline coverage is because here we're talking about an increase of two eight five down there is to seventy dollars and nineteen cents, but the recommendation is good to go to a hundred. But then, what happens next year? <clears throat> Just to try to like make it so there's less that we have to discuss on a yearly basis. I thought maybe that might be a cleaner way to do it. Okay, I think in the past we have been. Um, increasing that decliner by about the same percentage as all the other things. Yep. But it's such a small amount. I just thought that $100 a month, we, we can figure it out. Do you think then we'll just keep that flat for a number of years and then take it up again or? The hundred the, yeah, the decliner? Yeah, yeah. I would be willing to say yes right now if we can move on, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll just make a note on this thing and just say that um, okay. Okay. So we need a motion to approve yes, this please. proposal. If you're going to approve what I recommend, yes, you can just make a motion to approve the manager's recommendations for health insurance. I'll make a motion to approve the manager's recommendation for health insurance. I'll second. Any further discussion or are we all set? All right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Okay. Um, we ready to move on to C? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So um, letter C is a legal issue that I want to bring before the board. Uh, I'm recommending that you go into executive session to do this, which means Ann can shut down. Uh, we need both of these one at a time. Those, those motions need to be made and voted upon one at a time, not together. Okay. Um, as chair, can I make the motion? Yeah. Or? yeah. Okay. All right. Um, First motion is, I move to find that general public knowledge of the details of pending litigation involving the town of Waterbury would clearly place the town at a substantial disadvantage. Um, so motion, second, approve. Okay, that's the motion. I'll second. Um, all in favor of approving the motion to uh, recognizing that the general public knowledge of details of pending legis or litigation would clearly place the town at a substantial disadvantage. Please say aye. 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 All right, second motion. I move to enter into executive session to consider pending litigation involving the charge of Mr. Oak, or better known as KO versus Town of Waterbury and related confidential attorney-client communications made for the purpose of providing legal advice to the town. Is there a second? I'll second that. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Right. So we'll move into executive session. Thank you.